Hey y'all, I'm Bridget Bartlett. I'm the CEO and founder of Vision Marketing and Design, and I am so, so, so super excited to have Mr. Sean Clark, the man, the legend, the CEO and co-founder of High Level. Thank you so much for joining me, Sean, and I am super, super excited to meet you because you may not know this, but you've been coming at me from High Level for <laughs> over a year now, so I'm really excited wow. to be with you. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. So um, just to get started, um, just to get some background, I would love to hear um, how did High Level come about? What what was the problem Ooh. that you were looking to solve? What's the story? Sure. So I had a software company. Um, it was just me, myself, and I. Um, and uh, I was helping small businesses. Basically, uh, they, you know, a lot of small businesses would send invoices, and they wouldn't get paid on time. And then it really have a big issue uh, in terms of paying their vendors. And a lot of them would go bankrupt over it. So I created a piece of software that would automate, basically automatic invoice reminders. And so through that business, I met about a thousand small business customers. And, you know, after a while, I ran out of things to do. And I started asking them like, you know, what, what else would you like in your business? And they all said the same thing. They said, we'd like more customers. And so when that business got acquired, um, I knew what I wanted to do. I really wanted to try to solve for that problem. And so I started down that road with my first co-founder, my original co-founder, Varun, who's still with us today, and um, built kind of high level 1.0. And so uh, and so that was kind of, it, originally it was, uh, let's see, two-way text messaging and reputation management was the, what we started with. Um, and that was kind of the, the first version of high level. We took it out to a bunch of those customers that I knew. And it was, at first it was really exhilarating because they all saw the demo and they loved it and they bought it. Um, and then two weeks later, they started canceling, which was not so good. And um, I, you know, and I took I take those things very personally. So I, I was really, at, you know, trying to understand why the heck did you like the demo, but you can't, you don't like it now. But you know, what's your problem? Um, and so, you know, that is really at, in that moment, they said, you know, we really love the software, but we just don't have time to implement it, figure it out, that kind of thing. Um, and so we were lucky because really right there in that sort of in that moment of our lives, we got a call from a marketing agency. And the, and the I remember getting on this guy emailed me and said, Hey, you know, we have a co-customer in common. I'd really like to get on a call with you and see like what you guys are doing for him and all this. And I remember the time thinking like, well, I'm not wasting my time with this guy. He doesn't pay me any money. Um, he's not my customer, that kind of thing. So anyways, I got on the phone with him and he, he loved the system. He bought it for all 80 of his agency clients. But the, the, the most important thing I learned was, you know, he actually had really good tips on things he thought we could do better. Um, two weeks went by, he was still around, um, which was amazing. And it really started us down that journey of realizing that the agency really is that unsung hero of small business success and medium business success, really. Um, and so it was, it was really a pinnacle moment for us. So what made you decide? So you have this great suite of tools. What made you decide to go the white label? option? Well, you know, again, back to this whole premise. So, you know, we stopped selling, you know, shortly after that, you know, <clears throat> we went to our first mastermind and we sold 40 agencies and it was awesome. But really what I learned is that again, agencies really make the difference between success and failure for their customers. And when I realized that I thought, okay, how can we just serve these folks without serving the, the SMBs? Cause I looked out in the market and I said, you know, what are other people doing here? And, you know, they had partner programs and these sort of things, but they seem like very disingenuous. It seemed to me like, cool, marketing agency, we'll let you ship us our, your customers, then we'll take it from there. And then I, as I started to meet more agencies, I, I heard these stories of like, oh, I bought this expensive CRM. I, I put my heart into it. I got it working for my client. And then my client fired me and because they thought the CRM was doing all the work. And then they kept the CRM and you know, I'm out, you know now I'm out of a client. And so I thought, gosh, how do we solve for that problem, right? And I, and I really, truly thought that, you know, if the client stopped believing that the software did all the magic and all the hard work, that fundamentally we could we could solve for that. And, and so that's why we ultimately first went the white label route and why we only, we, we'd prefer only to be white label to this day. Yeah, it's genius. And I'm super excited about it, by the way. 
Because, you know, high level yeah. solves, solves the agency problem. So you acquire a client and then you're like, okay, well, you know, you need a ClickFunnels account or you're building on your own account. Oh, you need a Weber or you're building on your own account. You're managing all of these things or you have to like pay these exorbitant amounts for the enterprise plans for it. It's just such a hassle. But what's so cool about high level is you just have this awesome suite of tools and you control as the agency owner, all of those tools, which makes it such an easy segue into like services, even VA services, which I, I see high level has like taken over the internet. I think they, I wouldn't say broke the internet, but I think they've taken over because there are people that are acquiring high level skills and then selling their skills and creating all of these products, which I am, I'm curious. I love the high level community. The Facebook group has, I think the coolest, smartest people that I've ever met. It does. So, so I wonder, was the community intentional or was it something that you're just like, wow, I didn't realize, I guess if you create this awesome product, then it attracts all these <laughs> really talented people. Yeah. I mean, I would say everything that we've ever done successfully, we've locked into one way or another. Um, you know, when we first got started, it was sort of like, okay, we, we, we immediately recognized we had these just super smart people and we knew we, we could learn so much from them. And we really see our job quite honestly, as not trying to sit around dreaming this stuff up. We feel like if we just talk to our customers enough, if we understand them enough, if we listen to their needs, we can be successful and they can be successful and so can their customers. And so from the very get-go, we wanted a, a place to do that. And Facebook really just seemed like the most obvious uh, place. Most of our customers were already there. Um, it was easy for us to create the group. And, you know, I would say, well, it's, it's an imperfect world. Um, you know, it's kind of like democracy. It's messy, but in the end, it gets there. You know, um, it's always been a, a, a great place because whether it's learning from people um, and understanding their challenges, whether it's seeing, you know, my favorite thing, of course, is just seeing two people connect on something where someone needs help and then they get help on something that has nothing to do with high level, right? Like something where it's just like peers talking to each other and like sharing and, and seeing the world is like, uh, you know, everybody can win. So, I, you know, the community, honestly, we lucked into it, but I, I have to say, I was, I would say, even beyond our software, I would say it's probably our biggest asset because it's the community that got us here and it's the community that sustains us. And it's this wonderful sort of bi-directional kind of place. Yeah. And I love that you focus so much on listening to the user. Um, you know, I've heard you in town halls and sometimes your response to complaints, I'm like, man, I need to be more like that guy. <laughs> but you're so <laughs> receptive to saying, yeah, I understand that problem. And then, you know, hey, let's let's look into this. Let's get it fixed. I, I love that. And that that's also reflective in the community as well. And I, I love how, um, you know, when you have a software company and then people are investing, you know, developers investing so much time and money to create like add-on products that go directly with high level, that speaks volumes of their trust in high level, that they can actually invest all of this time and money creating like these add-ons for like Facebook ads and, you know, lead gen tools and all of these integrations and yeah. special tools people are building just to add on to high level. That's incredible. You know, we work really hard at that. Um, you know, we have an open API um, and, you know, I'm a software engineer by trade and I have integrated with a lot of systems and I've had the experience of, I've had some wonderful experiences and I've had some terrible experiences. And it feels like some systems are just sort of inherently selfish. And you can tell the people behind it are trying to sort of like land grab everything. You know, the way we think about it is, you know, we're a platform and, you know, we want to provide a base level set of tools in a certain area. But we, but again, we love our customers and and, and we think about it like this, like how can we be experts at everything, right? We, we can't. And, and we are benefited when someone comes in. I, I, I you know, I, I was the, the example I always remember is like, there's a guy in our community who knows uh, cars really well, like car lots and car sales. And he's integrated like the inventory management system for car lots and the credit check system. So now his version of high level, you know, you can like, see, you know, see if you got the blue Toyota Tacoma on the lot and you can run a credit check for the customer. And you can, you can buy the car all through it. And none of that comes out of the gate with high level. And I love that he's been able to do that. Um, and we really see that as, as a bonus and a, as a plus. Um, and we've seen people sell that to other customers. We've seen them to sell it to other businesses. And, you know, th this is something that we're very passionate about. We really want to have that open environment 
because I will say my my last SaaS business, I was really just an add-on for QuickBooks and for Zero. And if it wasn't for them and their marketplaces, particularly into it, they did a fabulous job. I wouldn't have had a business without them. And I really love this idea that we can do that for other people. Yeah, you know, when I go looking for, um, you know, if high level doesn't do something that I wish that it did, and it's usually lead gen stuff anyway, um, I always want to look at the community first because it's like, why oh, sure. would I not look at the community? Because they're going to create something that's really easy for me to use within high level. So I, I absolutely love that. But um, I did yeah, want to We're going to expand this actually. Um, we're going to do even better this quarter. So we'll have a more formal marketplace inside so we can expose a lot of these folks directly in app. So that way it will make your uh, kind of your browsing a lot easier and you will categorize it and that kind of thing. So as you're looking for those tools are easier to find. Yeah, I love that because everybody wins in that situation. Oh, wow. um, I did want to ask you though, in your whole business career, not just high level in general, what would you yeah. say is the biggest mistake that you've made in business and what did you learn from it? Um, I would say partnering with the wrong person. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and, and I, I, I think and it's funny because having, having partnered with the absolute right people, um, this time, uh, and, and having a chance to speak with many agencies who've gone through this, you know, I can't tell you how many times it's funny. I've seen the marriage and the divorce, you know, I, I, of many people where that, you know, uh, on, in business where I remember when they came to me all excited, they merged their accounts together. It was all going to be great. And then six months later, there were mortal enemies and they, you know, they, they helped to run each other over their cars, you know, it, and, and I just really, but it really speaks to me because I've had, I've been in both situations. So I would say tr truly knowing your co-founders or your, or your partners will really make or break the difference. Because I, I will say that my, in the past, I have definitely hooked up with the wrong, wrong people. Um, and, you know, it, it ended horribly for me. And so I would say, and, and I would say the other direction works as well. The only reason I'm here is because I have two amazing co-founders, um, you know, who I, I just can't say enough great things about. So it's definitely finding the right people to work with, um, whether they're true co-founders, whether they're just people in your on your team. Like, I mean, I would not be here without the other 309 employees um, that we have now <laughs> um, holding me up, making me look good. Well, they do a good job. Um, they, they also do a good job of making high level look good because as an affiliate, I'm with you. They're, from, they're phenomenal. You know, as an affiliate, um, I would never just say, hey, Google, you don't, you've never heard of high level, go Google high level, go look <laughs> at the YouTube channel and just see, like get a feel for the atmosphere. Um, that is something that really impressed me when I first started looking for an alternative to where I was at. Um, when you go to high level, you see the professionalism, you see the experience behind the people who are actually teaching a lot of times online, you know, people are, how do you start a business oh. online? How do you, you know, and it's people who have oh, no yeah. experience at all. And they're trying to do this training, but you see. Yeah. It's like corporate, level. very corporate and very bland. And yeah, I hated that stuff. So yeah, we don't, we, we just, but that's not who we are. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's very impressive. And it's a great, you know, as an affiliate, when you promote a company, you want to have confidence that, you know, they're going to oh, yeah. be around in five to 10 years. Okay. Which speaking of that, oh, yeah. where do you see high level in the next five to 10 years? Gosh, people always ask me this, and I feel like I have a really boring answer, but I love the answer, which is I, I just want to keep doing what we're already doing. You know, um, I feel like we've created a, a, a situation where everybody is winning. So you know, our customers are winning because we're giving them a, a not just a tool, we're giving them a platform and a business where they're they're making a lot more money than they were before. They're able to, I, I, I think of, our, you know, I think of us as, you know, as arming the rebels, you know, I feel like we're giving tools to people who used to be held at, a, at an arm's length by other tech companies. We're giving them the same tools to go out into the world and make real change on behalf of their customers, but also own um, the revenue that comes back from that. And so as a result, I, I feel like we're really, truly um, just doing amazing things for small businesses, which is really what I set out to do in the beginning. Um, and so I guess just seeing that we can help create many, 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 many more successful um, businesses, you know, whether you call them agencies or consultants or, you know, they could be many names. We, we, we're calling them SaaSpreneurs ourselves. Um, I just think is the right answer. I think we're we're fundamentally changing a model. And this year is very instructive. I mean, most traditional SaaS companies 
who raised a lot of money and you know use that to hire a lot of salespeople and run a lot of ads. Many of those people are sadly now laying a lot of those employees off and because their financial structures were never solid. And the great thing about us is we've been profitable since day one. And I, and I don't think it's because you know we're smarter, faster, better. I think it's because we've partnered with our customers in a way that other people have not. And we've, we've decided that we want to share revenue in a way that other people have not. And I feel like it's made us that much stronger. Um, so I just want to see how it will be the, the dominant model in the world, because I think this model really respects the idea that, you know, I always say, like, I want how it will be a $10 billion company. And what I mean by that is I want $9 billion in, in revenue coming back to my customers, and I want a billion dollars coming back to me. That's the world I want to live in because I feel like it, um, that's just a much better world to be. I mean, it, you know, there's so much, there's such such a thing as enough um, and sharing with other people and seeing their creativity and watching them do amazing things for, for their customers and to change their own lives. I mean, the, you know, every time I see somebody buy a new car, or buy a new house or something, I, I'm thrilled or just leave a job that they hated. It's, it's really awesome to see and tr truly why I do what I do. You know, uh, in the first five minutes that I saw the high level dashboard, I was signing up and switching software companies and bringing, I had 70 clients at that time and I brought them all over. It wow, was like, well, congratulations. That's a good would, number. It was crazy. I, but I, I saw that. So I love reselling software. I mean, I think it's like a, a, next to affiliate marketing, my favorite business model. Um, but one thing that high level has that I love and I don't see anyone else doing is the ability to resell unlimited user accounts. The yeah, income yeah. potential is and en literally endless. And what's yeah. beautiful about it is it's like you just pay the one fee every month, which is like, ridiculous um and then it's like you can, literally income potential for days years yeah i mean we have i mean we have lots of millionaires now um and i'm really proud of that um you know our our, our largest SaaS company our SaaS partner will do 10 million this year um the next down i think we'll do six so this would have been last year so i don't know if they're getting 2023 but i mean um and and these are large organizations but we have many you know one two three uh, person shops that are you know doing a million dollars a year just in SaaS revenue outside their agency because we can track all that um, and and that's really my dream and the cool thing is like you know it's funny because a million dollars sounds like a lot of money and it, and it certainly is but I mean it, you know if you did two or three hundred thousand dollars a year I mean as a single individual that's a lot of money for the average person and I know a lot of people who have changed their lives based on it and to me that's the goal and the great news is that the other side of it they're they're doing it by helping small businesses. Um, you know, improve their lives, right? So it's like, there's nothing, no one's losing in this except maybe the traditional VCs or whoever, who, the money people who would, who would love to be in on the act. So I guess for me, that's the most important and exciting part of it. Yeah, because you can not only resell those tools, but use them for your own business. So it's just really totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true as well. Such Absolutely, no brainer. It's like the I, I when I started with high level, I just started canceling subscription after subscription, and like even with tools like I love how you guys roll out products. By the way, um, you know it's beta, it's MVP, and it's like um, yeah, but but so many other companies will just like release something because they, you know, they built up the hype and I, I love how you guys do that. Um, and speaking of that, like the affiliate management system that we have inside yeah. locations, I know that's not everything it's going to be, but uh, oh. so one of my, one of my users asked me, well, what do you think? Should I just use first promoter or should I, you know, it's not really yeah. where it's going to be, but my whole thing is high level. You guys, you're you're adding and upgrading things so fast that it doesn't make any sense to like go to first promoter, set everything up on that, get every all of your users having affiliate links, and then you just switch it in a few months because you guys have duplicated, yeah. you know. So I I totally love that. Yeah. So um, we'll like yeah like affiliates like this quarter I know they're on the roadmap. We'll have the affiliate portal goes live. And I believe the, the, the second tier commission structure goes live. And, you know, this is actually my favorite way to do this because again, back to like how we roll, like if we think something's important to our customer, well, as a product category, that's exactly what we do to say, all right, what is this? We, I call it the skateboard model because I'm, there's a cool programmery thing out there where they show like, you know, you, you could start, you know, everybody wants a race car, right? And then, so there's two ways to build a race car in programmer land. You know, you can sort of like 
build a wheel and then an axle and then another wheel and you put a top on it. And that's the more traditional way people would think to do it. But the problem is all that all takes time. And all the way along, you're just sort of telling people, don't worry, it's coming. And don't worry, it's coming. Right. But and then and then when you release it, you know, hopefully you got it all right, but you never do. And people are upset and it took too long and it's still not where they want it. It's just all a big mess. Right. But if you start with a skateboard and then you make it a scooter and then a bicycle and then a motorcycle, you know, all the way along, what you're doing is you're giving people something they can use. And invariably, you know, most people, when you put out the skateboard, they're going to be like, that's nice, guys, but it's not a race car. And you're like, that's cool. But then some weirdo will come out of the crowd and be like, oh, actually, you know what? I just needed a skateboard this whole time. I didn't even realize it. And off they go. And as you continue to progress it, you're getting more and more people and you're getting feedback on exactly what they want. So it's like, hey, I see what's in the skateboard, but this is the next thing I'd like to see you add. And if you can if you can tabulate those and understand what they are, that next feature will have a bigger impact. And people don't have to wait around for a year just to see what you're going to do, right? So it's a great way to develop, in my opinion. Well, yeah. And as an affiliate, one of the things in content creation, one of the things that I love to do is find workarounds. So you guys release the affiliate management system. Well, I need to learn it. And all the things that it doesn't do, I want to find workarounds and teach people how to do that stuff. So it's an opportunity in everything for sure. Um, so I was going to ask you too, if someone was brand new to high level, you know, they're yeah. maybe don't even have like their first client, what would you yeah. say, what would be your best advice to kind of get a quick win? Yeah. So actually it's funny you call it quick wins because we actually have a whole, it's, I think it's go high level.com slash quick wins now, um, believe it or not. And, um, let me see if I got there. Oh yeah, that is exactly what it's called. Um, so, uh, I'll drop in the chat in case you want it, but anyways, it's, um, it, there's a YouTube series now called quick wins and it's exactly the topic it covers because, you know, again, there's a lot of different ways and, you know, we came to the space with agencies and there's a lot of different ways to be an agency, but I really truly think that even if you're an experienced agency, a big agency, or somebody just getting started, like this, this idea of delivering this small set of software-based wins for your customer, everybody can do this. And it's super valuable because if you're just getting started, especially, I, rem- I remember this. It's like, oh, pick an itch, sell Facebook ads, like $2,000 a month plus ad spend. And it sounds really glorious. Like, oh, just get 10 customers and live on a beach in Thailand. But it never works like that. What happens is the, the, the dentist or the plumber or the whoever, they don't they don't want to pay any human being $2,000 a month for anything because they don't do it in their business. So it just puts a big target on your back. But this, the whole idea of the SaaS play is you're now you're, you're doing a $300 a month bill. And as a result, you scale a lot better. So you're, you're able to go in, deliver software-based stuff. And the other thing that I'll tell you about Facebook ads is they're kind of hard. You have to like learn targeting and create them and they get shut down and the accounts get shut down and blah, 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 blah. It's just a big pain in the butt. This is simple. It's like literally these quick wins. You're talking about three to five features. You can give them to almost any business, anywhere, anytime, create a lot of value and just stack the clients up and they'll stay for life because you're talking about a $300 a month product that's delivering $30,000 a month of value. And it's very easy for the business to see. And this is the weird thing people don't understand. It's psychology. So like, if you are more expensive than anything else that business owner pays for, you're just immediately broken, wrong, or and need to get, I need to get rid of you because you just don't, you don't make sense to me. Even if, you know, even if you're doing something great, I think it's just hard for people to perceive or understand, especially if you're a busy small business owner, right? You're out every day in the van driving around. Like you don't have time to, you know, look at the ad report and see the ROI and understand the clicks and all this other stuff. You don't, none of that makes sense to you. It just feels too hard. It feels too expensive. So you cancel them. So you need that cheaper product. So I think that is what I would do. I would go to go hello.com slash quick wins. Uh, yeah, that's, that's totally awesome. And, you know, I think a lot of people underestimate that missed text callback feature or the missed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. My favorite, missed- my favorite feature yes. in the whole world. Yes, because, you know, when I started uh, and, you know, eight years ago, my husband and I started a local business and, you know, it was What'd me working my full time job and then him, you know, out in the field. It was uh, landscaping. What was it? It, uh, landscaping. landscaping. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And the problem that we had, you know, I didn't really know a lot about marketing. I, I wasn't a techie person, but the problem we kept having is the phone rang off the hook and it was almost always home advisor. And so I, what my husband, I just got him using high level just this last season. Ooh, good job. And he was, I know he's not techie at all. And he's like, I don't know this app thing and whatever. Um, but when he realized that he was no longer getting all of those phone calls from home advisor, 
user and that you know we we had the missed call text back where it was like it would send them the information so they could you know submit the quote online that whole process it, that was all it took for him to be like a high level believer. And now he's like, that is the coolest thing. But I it think is, agency owners is. say underestimate, you know, and it's all about going back to knowing your client, you know, what are oh, yeah. the problems and what are they struggling with? That's such an well, easy well, one for them. Well, and I think that, I mean, they're just so, I mean, like if you ever ask someone like, have you ever called a business and had them not pick up? Everyone says yes to that, right? And then if you're, and so you get that as a consumer. And then if you go to the business owner, imagine you just say the same thing. Have, how, you know, do you ever have people call and you can't get to the phone call? They all say yes, right? And you're like, you know, and the great thing about businesses is no one calls them to like chit chat or talk about the weather, anything like that. They're, they're either salespeople they don't want to talk to or m- m- customers who want to buy their stuff. And it's like, well, here's the deal. What if I could give you something that would get rid of all the salespeople and put, take all the calls that you're missing and turn them automatically into customers. No one's going to say no to that. And here's the great thing to get to actual value. So I always say this to the people, it's like, well, what's your average customer's job worth? You know, and I would say this for landscaping. I would say this for dental. I would say this for plumbing. It's like, if you took one missed call and turned that into a customer, what is that worth to that business? And almost always it's at least $300. So I'm like, look, you charge them 300 bucks. That's one missed call. A, a month that you turn into a customer, anything above that, wow, you're just creating ROI for them. And you've just made the sale over and over and over and over again. And the reason I actually know this works is because I still, I have one small business customer still on the, on, on high level that I brought in here in U- Eugene, where I live. It's an HVAC guy. <clears throat> he showed up at my house, did a fabulous job. I looked on Google. He had 12 reviews. I said, what the heck is wrong with you? Do you not know Google is how this works? And he's like, yeah, but I'm a plumber. What the heck do I know? And I said, hey, listen, what if I had a piece of software that would get you more reviews? He said, how much? I said, well, I'm thinking about if all the features and I was going really deep and doing a terrible job. And I said, ah, oh, with everything, it's like 300 bucks, it's like 300 bucks sold. And that's it. I haven't, I have barely spoken to the man for six years and he pays every month. But if you go on Google, he now has like 400 reviews. He's no longer a single owner operator. He's got 13 trucks. I don't think the guy has been on a HVAC job in many a year. Um, and that is all off the back of that one simple feature. And I just got him on Miss Call Text back the other day and he loves it. It's it's insane. It's just blowing up his business. So you do these really, really, really simple things for people and you create extraordinary outcomes. And like I said, they'll pay you forever and they won't call you because they don't need to. They're just making money. Yeah, because they just want the result. And if you're providing it, yeah. it's a no-brainer yeah. for them. Precisely. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, I did have someone who asked um, asked me to ask you, when is the next Ooh. corporate event? Well, we just sent out a big email. We have our, our Sasspreneur Mastermind coming up here very shortly. I think it is in February of all things. Um, I am a speaker, so I probably should know these things. Um, but it is, um, in fact, I should just look at the email that I, that got sent out today. Um, but it, oh, there it is right there. 2023 Sasspreneur Mastermind. So it is, da, 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 go hello. It is February 8th and 10, through the 10th of this year. So it is coming up very quickly. Do you guys ever have those events outside of Houston? Dallas. Oh, um, Dallas. but, Dallas. um, only because my co-founder Robin, who, by the way, was the marketing agency that called me um, way back when we first got started. Um, he he lives in Dallas. Um, and so we just make him, we make him do all the events. Oh, smart. <laughs> and Dallas is really central. Like almost everybody can get to, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I live in Oregon, so I'd love to have him here, but I'm the only person here. So I don't think that's very fair. So it feels like most people can get to Dallas. So it's kind of a semi-central place for most people. It's easy flights. I, think that, and I live in Indiana, so I think the weather is probably much nicer there anyway. So that that's- cool. You would think, although I will tell you, we've had two board meetings canceled due to ice storms in wow. Dallas, Texas, which you would never imagine they have anything clear, anything close to that, but they do have some crazy weather sometimes. But yes, overall, I would say they probably have relatively mild weather. <laughs> So in 2023, what do you think is the coolest feature that you guys are going to be releasing that you think that you personally are excited Ooh, about? Gosh, you know, that's like, um, you know, which, which child do you love the most? Um, that is a really tough question. I, you know, it, it all depends. I mean, like, I think that 
There are a couple of things. So, I mean, I am really excited about um, the AI copywriting stuff we're coming out with. So like, um, we're going to do this across the board, but like, it'll be in blogging, it'll be in social media posting, it'll be in all those things. So we'll have like the ability to do all the AI, cool AI copywriting stuff everybody's been checking out. I think that stands to be really big if you're a marketer who's doing that. It definitely seems to be a trend at the moment. That's awesome. So it's going to be like just the feature. So if you're creating a blog post, it's just, you can choose the AI. Oh my gosh. Now, now it'll also be globalized. So like you can save it and you can like kind of scratch pad it if you want to, but we'll, we'll really try to expose it in context as well, because ideally I'm writing a blog post and I'm like, ah, forget this. You know, I want something to write that blog post for me. So we'll try to make it really super easy to do it in context as well. Then in fact, that's where it'll start. And it will start with social media posting. It'll actually come out this quarter. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, so that one will be very cool. <clears throat> uh, then I also think, I mean, stuff like, you know, we're going to internationalize, uh, uh, which I think will be very, very cool. Um, we, we have a customer portal coming out that I think is going to be very cool. Uh, so if customers can actually log in, I think like estimates are going to be coming out, which I also think is awesome and proposals um, because I do, I like your landscaping business. I still really want to live in a world where we can get all the way through that track. And right now I think estimating and QuickBooks integration, which is also coming is missing, zero integration missing. Um, so that kind of stuff. Um, so it's it depends on who we're talking about, right? Um, but there's just a lot of a lot of that stuff. Or like two-way email sync is actually out um next week. And that is, you know, I'm in Outlook uh, or or Gmail, I click new message, I write an email, and boom, it pops into high level automatically and all the replies and all of that. Because I think that sort of brings us on up to par with some of the larger CRM systems. Because I really think if you look at a lot of the larger CRM systems, they're super expensive. And I think that, you know, that was, that's one of the few features we don't have um, that I feel like brings us up to that level. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, so I don't know, it's just, it's tough. And, you know, honestly, that's like just a quarter's worth of work. So, I mean, I don't, and in fact, we don't even plan farther out than a quarter. Cause again, kind of going back to being flexible, we really want to like move with our customer. Right. So um, honestly, I think there's just going to be a ton of features out there. And it, the ones that are most exciting are always the ones that people use the most. And I see them kind of take, take out their, Oh, and like, sorry, like pricing, like, like we're going to come out with for the SaaS preneurs, we're going to come out with like per user pricing and per contact pricing. So that like, if you ever get into the situation where you're like getting compared to a smaller, like a cheaper quote unquote CRM, give you, giving you the ability to price it that way. So that way you can actually be more competitive. So lots of stuff like that. So it just depends on who you are. In fact, Oh, and like calendars, we're going to have a uh, class scheduling comes out this quarter. And so does, uh, Com combined scheduling. So like, um, this is a weird one, but it's like, if you want to book, uh, like if you want to book me, but you also, but I like for like a particular thing, I also always have to bring someone else. Like you can co, like you can co-book. So you're booking two people simultaneously, but from the customer's point of view, it's just one person, right? So like for this webinar, if it was me and Xavier, we could have like given you a link that would have booked us both and shown our availability co-mingled. So for some like co-selling teams, that's really big. So all that stuff, I don't know. All of that's kind of cool to me. I think it's definitely cool. I'm excited about it. But the AI thing though, I am a little geek on some AI. So I think that's probably the thing I'm most excited about. So yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, we, you know, we, I waited, I, you know, I'm a tech guy, you know, and I really love stuff like that. But I really wanted to see like, you know, is anybody going to use this? Is it going to become a thing? And I feel like it's it's taken off and, you know, it's, it's way past people are going to use it. It's clear that people are using it. So it's, you know, and again, I always try to think of scalable ways for people to push their business. Cause like with social media posting is always an easy one. It's like, you know, most businesses can't and won't pay for custom social media posts. And honestly, they probably don't need them. They probably need social media, like stuff that looks good. And so if you can find a way to create sort of like this consistent scalable approach and you can do it with templates, I think that's actually a fantastic approach. And I think with the AI on board, you can also probably move to a world where your your post content is even um, tweaked enough that it is truly unique for each of those posts. So we're like going to win on both sides, I think, with that. So a lot of that stuff, I think, is going to be super valuable to the, to the small business and to the agency who's trying to add on these types of services, but may, may or may not, you know, like, I don't know, be good, good at copywriting. Yeah. And it's genius that you're incorporating it into the actual tool instead of just having like a, here's a tab where the AI tool is. I, I love yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, well, and other tools have to do that. See, and this is where, as we move along, we're gaining structural advantage, right? Because if we're the social media posting tool 
and we come in and add AI, man, that's so magical because you can do it where you want to do it versus, yeah, like, oh, go to the tab, hit the generate button and copy it and move it over. And it, it just way, way fewer steps. And it's just one more way that you're saving the users money because now they can cancel that Jasper subscription because it's already incorporated. You're so smart. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's our goal. You know, again, every tool that you need as a marketer to go out there. And again, also, you know, let's say your customer's like, hey, have you seen this stuff? Blah, 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 blah. We want you to be like, yeah, and I've already got that stuff. Or, hey, we've already been using it for you or whatever, right? Give you those advantages on the ground to really win. Yeah, yeah. It's super awesome. I'm super stoked about that. Well, thank you so much for your time, Sean. I really appreciate it. Yeah. This will not be the last time that we speak. I'll probably... I'll probably see you on an event here in the future. So. I can't I, I can't wait. I hope so. Yeah, I'm super stoked. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a good one. All right. Thanks for having me. Bye okay. for now. Bye. Before you go, if you have questions, join us for open office hours starting right now at BridgetBartlett.com. See you there.